Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and I'm making these as quick and as kind of efficiently as I possibly can because I've done an awful lot of testing for launch and I'm literally trying to rattle my way through the boards. So, Prime Z980 Wi-Fi, it's the DDR5 model. I have done a DDR4 versus a DDR5 video with this and the Strix A D4 which is on the channel and on the website if you would like to go and have a look. If you don't and you're here just to see uh, this, then inside the box you get your Wi-Fi dongle. You get a couple of SATA cables, you get your front panel header thing, and then other than the manual and a CD, not a great deal else. I have looked on the ASUS website to find out the specifications of the power delivery. Now, all I know is 60, sorry, 16, so one six, 16 plus one power phases around the outside. There isn't any information about the specifics when you were to break it down, how many amps or anything like that. I did ask for guides, I didn't get any, so I don't know the information. It's not online, so I'm really sorry, I can't give it to you. Don't wanna be a letdown, but I can only give you what uh, has been prepared for me. So, two eight pins up in the top corner, not shielded like you may have seen with some of the other boards. CPU fan header, AIO pump header, CPU optional header over here. Weirdly as well, they have put a chassis fan down in here, which I wasn't too keen on. I still think, personally, that to have a fan header down here just feels a bit old school. You can see the power phases around the outside. The heat sinks are a bit basic, but in reality, I've not had any heat problems with these yet, but I'll cover more stuff in a minute. So you get your four pin and a three pin up here for RGB, so normal and then addressable. Down the side, they are solid pins. USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 3.2. You do get the new slider as well. So if you watch that, rather than it just rocking backwards and forwards, click clock, it slides and I love this. This will be what Gigabyte are copying next year because they've copied the other one this year. Only two SATAs. Uh, you do get a power button there, another fan there, two more SATAs down the bottom, but they're obviously vertical rather than horizontal. Another fan header here underneath. Two internal or, yeah, internal USBs we'll call it. And then two addressable RGBs there and another fan header here. So in total, one, two, three, four. Let's do that zoomed out because I did that really badly, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fan headers in total. I'll show you a photo with the M.2 stripped off that uh, I have put live on the website. And then around the back, quite simplistic, HDMI and display port at the top. I guess they're assuming that more people are going to use the onboard video capabilities with 13th gen on uh, this board. USB-C, six USB uh, threes, but you've got three USB 3.2 gen two. Then you've got two USB 3.2 gen two. Yeah, sorry, I'm confused because I've said so many motherboards this evening. 2.5 gig ethernet another uh, USB-C there, Wi-Fi 6E, and then just a basic three audio, no gold outputs, just fairly basic. Now, performance. Uh, overall, we didn't bother overclocking it in the end because it wasn't happy with uh, pushing our i9. We are testing all the boards with the 13900K, and we just didn't think that going beyond um, what it was giving us to like push an overclock beyond stock was really worth it. One of the things we would say with this though is undervolting your i9 if you're going to go that route is the way forward. Uh, try and tem tame the uh, temperatures of your CPU that way with a, an offset or just a manual voltage increase it will uh, actually work well for you guys. I don't think if you buy this, you're probably going to end up with the i7 or the i5 anyway. It's definitely capable of overclocking the i5, but you won't actually really probably get the maximum out of it if you uh, compared to the overclocks that we got on, let's say, the Hero. Uh, other thing with this is, like I said, we did do a DDR4 versus a DDR5 
uh, guide, which meant we have actually done a full set of suites with this, with the 13600 and the 13900. So you can actually go and get some extra data for this board from over there if you would like. Overall though, 350 pounds, that it once upon a time would have given you a very, very good motherboard. Sadly, nowadays, those motherboards are now 500 pounds plus. So the old Prime, which may have been 180 or 250 pounds, has now got a solid 100 pound price increase. And uh, like I said, we've not really been able to dig into too much of the nitty gritty about what's going on underneath the board because Asus just haven't published or given it to us. So published it on their sites or given it to us. So we're a bit hamstringed. Uh, but feels expensive for an entry level board, doesn't it? We do agree, but you do need to remember that this is the DDR5 model at 350. They do do a DDR4 model, which is a little bit cheaper. And to be pe perfectly honest, for this board, that's probably where we'd go. We'd save the money and go DDR4.